Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Let's do some flips of some yard sale finds that I got the other day. So this first one is a rolling pin. It's an all natural. Nothing's been done to this rolling pin. So I'm pretty excited to get it and do something with it. It only cost me a dollar or two. I can't remember, but um, I was pretty excited to get started on it. So this is a uh, folk art paint in the forest moss color and it dries a little bit darker than what you see here. It's very, very pretty color and I think it's great for the fall holiday season. It's really good for any time but I thought it would just be a nice change of something t different to do for the holidays coming up. I did two coats on the handles. So I'm going to use some of this Fusion Mineral Paint uh, brand. This is Hemp Oil Wood Finish. This is uh, food safe. So I got this sample for, I think it was $3.99. And I wanted to try it on this rolling pin because I wanted to make it so uh, if somebody wanted to actually use it instead of just decor, that they could actually pull it right out of the drawer or wherever they have it and roll out some biscuits or some pie crust or whatever they decide to do. So I really love this color with this green. I think it is so pretty. Um, and I love how the hemp oil brings out the color in the wood. You can still see it and it's just just so complementing the two colors together. So I am now sanding down the handles and just to get them more distressed and, and making it look a little bit old and aged. And I'm just going to wipe them off and then I'm going to take my hemp oil again and wipe those handles so that anywhere where there is raw wood where I sanded it, it's going to get covered and then it also is going to seal in that paint. So I think this is going to be so pretty. So I got this family sign at the same yard sale uh, that I got the rolling pin and I wanted to just show you I didn't really do anything to it but clean it up and heat it up some spots and take some stickers off. It was five dollars at the yard sale. It's already at my booth and uh, again I didn't do anything to it just cleaned it up wiped it down and I thought it was really cute. I couldn't pass up this little rooster at the yard sale for $2. He was adorable. Um, I took some Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Spray Paint and I sprayed him because he was very shiny and I wanted the paint to stick to him really well. So I grabbed my, once he was dry, I grabbed my Waverly ink, which is the black paint. And I'm just going to give him a coat of black paint all over. I did one coat, but then I did touch him up here and there on spots that I may have missed. Uh, he was very detailed, so there were some spots that I just didn't quite get covered. So I just kept my brush right handy while I was drying him with my heat gun and got those spots covered. So now that he's all covered, I'm going to take my Waverly Clear Wax and put a little bit in this little dish that's right here. I'm um, just going to put it a little bit in there and then I really like using these little dishes. They're little condiment dishes and I have little covers to go with them so if I don't use up the whole thing of paint I can just put uh, a little, te little uh, marker on it of what it is and put the cover on. So I'm going to take this folk art mushroom paint. This is a brown grayish paint. It's really pretty. I love this color and I am uh, just mixing it up to just add some color to this clear wax. I'm gonna put it on my rooster. So 
So I'm brushing it on and um, I'm going to wipe it back, but I'm trying to get a cast iron pan look with him. I want it to look a little bit distressed and aged, kind of like a cast iron pan that hasn't been conditioned or oiled and it just was used and then let dry and it kind of has that film over the top of it. I want it to look like old cast iron. So uh, when somebody looks at this rooster, they're going to think, oh, he's really heavy and like a cast iron rooster, but he's really not. <laughs> so I brushed it all over and then I took my paper towel and I'm just dabbing and just wiping a little bit uh, some of that paint and wax back. I don't want to take it all off, but I do want to leave some of it to make it look aged and have it go down into the cracks and stuff as well. I think this makes it look like a nice primitive little rooster. It's a just something different than making him look like cement or just coloring him white and aging him. I think this looks really cute. Now I love this clock. I got it at the same yard sale that I got the rooster and I paid a few dollars for this as well. I love the frame around the clock. I don't know if the mechanism works at all but I'm going to take the back off and if it doesn't I can always buy a new mechanism or I can do something different with it. But I definitely know that I want to get rid of this brown paint that's around the outside of the clock. It, it's got like a filigree type uh, design on the front of it and it's really kind of old and just really not what I'm looking for. So I'm hoping that I can get the razor blade and scrape that off. It's like a paint on there. So I was hoping I didn't have to break out the chemicals to try and get this off. So I did get my razor blade and I started to scrape away at this paint and believe it or not, amazingly, without doing anything else, it actually worked. Just that razor blade and scraping it like I had paint on it uh, worked fantastically and came off very well. So I was pretty excited to get that off there. Um, I knew that things were going really good once I saw that happening. I'm giving it a good cleaning with just a sanitizing wipe and just cleaning it all the way around. It was quite dirty, so um, now that I'm cleaning it, I'm really seeing how awesome uh, this piece is, even more than I, than I thought before. So I was pretty excited to get doing what I wanted to do with it. So I just take my razor blade and I'm just going over if I found any pieces that I missed. Uh, pieces of paint or anything like that and then somebody had stuck the some little sticky pads on the back where it would go against the wall so I scraped those off and then sanded that down to get rid of those this will be painted so you shouldn't even be able to tell that that was on there just giving it a because it's so shiny I'm giving it a sand around the whole thing um, it just looks super shiny to me and I wanted to make sure that that paint stuck really nicely and then I'm just wiping it down. So I'm going to use my Folk Art Black ink paint um, and give this a just one coat. It's a very pigmented paint. It's thick and it does a really great job of covering my piece all in just one coat. I did while I was drying it with my heat gun, I did just look around and look for spots that were thin or spots that I missed and there were a couple so I just keep my 
paintbrush handy and I can just touch those up as I'm drying the piece. So I went around the whole outside edge and I even got it on the glass. I went right down to the glass um, because I knew once it was dry I'd be able to scrape that right off. It's a, really a lot quicker than trying to get the tape on there and get all the parts, uh, all the pieces of glass covered and then turn around and have to scrape it anyway. So I figured I would just do it this way instead and it worked just fine. So here I'm just taking my razor blade again and I'm scraping off the black paint that I got off the window uh, or on the glass and it worked just fine. And I just take a paper towel and go around the edge and clean that up nicely. So now that that's all dry and looking really good, I'm going to go back and make it look distressed and aged and old. And that means I'm taking sandpaper and I'm sanding down the edges. I'm hitting the high spots mostly around the edge, uh, right up close to the glass and around the outside. So then once I'm done, my little helper here, my granddaughter Katie, wanted to help me so she's wiping down the glass and the clock and getting the dust off there. And so I now am going to take the parts off this, uh, this clock face and get all the, the parts off there and just set them aside. I'll put them back together and we'll see if we can get this thing cleaned up and working. So my granddaughter wanted to help me paint, so I'm taking the Waverly plaster paint and the paintbrush and she is going to town painting this for me. She's going to paint the face of this clock, the whole thing. It was very yellowed um, and very yucky looking, so she is concentrating very hard on uh, getting that all nice and painted up for me. I'm just showing her how to do the strokes across the top so that it is nice and even and covered. And she did such a great job painting it. She's such a good helper. So then once that's done she's going to take my heat gun and dry it just a little bit and then we'll move on to the next step. So the next step I'm taking some black paint and I'm just going to go over the top part just, just a few inches up from the bottom. I am using decoupage paper on this and it's not quite tall enough to reach. You can't really tell when you've got the clock face on, but um, I wanted to just make sure that it, it looked nice. And if it was dark then it would uh, just cover nice a lot nicer. So now I just put on some uh, Mod Podge and I'm going to take this really cute chicken decoupage paper and we're going to put it right on the front. See how I'm saying that it doesn't quite reach the top or the bottom but you're not going to really be able to see that once the wood part of the clock is on but just in case I wanted to uh, cover that up. So just took a paper towel and getting out some of the wrinkles and once that was dry I am taking sandpaper and just sanding off the excess around the sides. If you do a downward motion when you're doing this it comes right off nice uh, and easily and doesn't tear the paper. To make the decoupage paper look even more distressed, I am taking my sandpaper and going over that and dulling it down and just making it look distressed. Then I'm going over it with my Mod Podge to seal it in. Time to put the clock mechanism back on. 
and I'm just making the hole in the center for that uh, clock piece to go in and then I'm setting in the arms the hour minute and the second hand and I love that the second the second hand is red I think that goes great with the picture so I'm putting the back on and then I will show you what it looks like I hope you guys love my projects today. Let me don't know down in the comments which one you liked the best, if you have one. And I appreciate you watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.